Now I know. I can't say I was surprised. It was more like the final piece of the puzzle to make all things fit. Everyone questioned me about being bugged, son. My parents never working. My $500 a week allowance that my mom thought was too much. The new custom vets. The trips to Florida. My parents always going to the fights. My pops always taking trips. And even his jury at the time. It's funny because my pops was the guy I watched Scarface with. The Godfather movies. Gangster Wars. The St. Valentine Massacre. And plenty other gangster movies. And all along, my pops was a pure gangster. So laced with this information, that my pops was who he was, didn't have a bearing on what was about to take place with me. You have to understand, this was the crack age. Cats my age were all hustling. When I moved on this side of town, my cousin Wink and his partner Frank Allen was the cats I looked up to. Wink had an all-white cat lap, Fleetwood Brome, with a blue hard top. Frank Allen had an all white blazer customized with a black rag top. I remember going to concerts and following them around watching them take pictures and when they had on their all leather Dita sweatsuits, cable chains, gold rings, and bank rolls of cash. I had to be a part of this. My cousin Wink was four or five years older than me and kept two or three women with him at all times. I never seen this shit in my life. One of the chicks was Donna Johnson. An older chick who was five or six years older than him. I'm going to come back to her later in this story because she plays a role in my life. So now that $500 a week allowance went to buying crack. We used to post up at Roller Circle, Tanya Raffer's apartment. That's where Brian stayed and was our headquarters. In the beginning, we rode around hustling, and since I was fresh in the city, the folks that hustled our packs were B-Web folks. With our earnings, we'd buy outfits from the Salem Mall or Athletes Outlet, then hit Goldmine Jewelers on Seamoth Dollar in the Northwest Shopping Plaza. B-Web and I became Jack the Jeweler's favorite customer. I bought gold and B-Web bought silver. I used to frequent it so much that Jack started weighing my money instead of counting it. After our shopping spree, we'll go over time to Raffers to change clothes to hit the clubs, either the Palladium or Graffiti's. After a few months hustling, still 14, I bought myself a Cadillac, a Sedan DeVille from JR Motors on 3rd Street that I put in my cousin Yante's name. He was 16 and would drop me off at the house at night and come pick me up in the daytime. It was short-lived because my parents found out the car was mine. And my pops end up taking it. But since Yante had license, pops would let us drive his Dodge Ram or his K5 Chevy Blazer. Which was even flyer because there was brand new trucks so we never missed a beat. At 15, I bought a Helix. I put it in Mike Gamble's name. He was a friend of B-Webb, but he and I got real cool. Cool enough to where I started giving him my money to put with his money to buy dope. Not only did he buy my dope, he sold it for me too. Mike was more established in the game than me and B-Web. Mike had to be five or six years older than me too. I guess this is where my pop comes in. Because I think they all thought by hustling with me, we'd be able to get dope from Big Guy since every hustler knew who Pops was. So for the folks who were still calling me bug son, that shit was about to change. All because of the Astro Van which put me, Lil Bugs Norman, on the map. I bought the Astro Van going on 16. I think I put in Troy Turner's name, nicknamed Nine Finger Troy. I bought it from Mark Jones, the hustler, the one who ran the Palladium and Graffiti's for $10,000. And for those of you who just thought I was a spoiled kid, I was, but I was still sitting on 50 stacks and hustle money at 16. This is how the Astro was born. After I purchased it, I took it straight to Soundwaves. You have to remember, this is the time when sound systems were big in cars and trucks. So I had to have the mother of all sound systems. 38 speakers in all. I had a wall built in the back consisting of 9 12-inch Surin Vega woofers, 
10 8 inch serum vegan woofers with 10 6 inch serum vega woofers, five in each door. The rest mids and tweeters. Powered by six 1000 watt Orion amps with six marine batteries in the back. Total price was 19 stacks, but I paid less because I let the Orion company use it in car shows. You can hear me five minutes before I arrive to your house. Truly legendary. Folks still bring up the Astro van in conversation. Of course, my parents didn't know I bought it. So, for the first couple of weeks, I used to park it over John Coleman's house. He was another hustler in the city that I was cool with. He had bought a house off Infirmary Road on the other side of Germantown. So, from there, I used to walk home. My mom, sitting in her usual spot at the bar in our kitchen, used to ask me where I was coming from, or who dropped me off, or why they didn't pull in the driveway. I used to tell her someone dropped me off on Germantown and I walked the rest of the way home. Call it mom's intuition, but she knew her son was not being dropped off and walking from Germantown every day. One day while getting out the shower, I heard loud music, looked out our picture window and saw my van pulling up in our driveway. Busted. So along with the van, my pops gave me the yellow Jag when I turned 16. He also bought me a Parisian from White Island Used Cars on Brown Street. I remember our talk while on our way to buy the Parisian. Since he knew I was hustling, his advice was me not to be hustling in my van or the Jag. So add it up. At 16, I had the Astro van, a four-door yellow Jag I had painted black with BBS rims on it, and my Parisian that I took straight to JoJo's and put bump in it. So, yep, I'm officially the flyest young nigga in the city. But did I stop there? Of course not. LL Cool J had just released I'm Bad, and I thought it was the flyest video ever. So what did I do? I went and bought a red two-door Jag with ground effect kit and Dayton's on it. The same Jag LL had in the video. Pops was pissed. How did I know? because I woke up to a two-piece while asleep at Big Mama's house. This is where he sat me down and we had a serious conversation about discipline. The discipline of having money and it takes even more discipline than keeping money. His next move I think he made to keep an eye on me and to give me responsibility. That's when he bought me a car wash on Cincinnati Street that me and my sister ran. We named it Little Bugs Car Wash. One late night, he called me and asked me to go open up the car wash, unlock one of the bays, and get back in my car, and that someone was about to drop a mobile home off. And once they leave, lock it back up and to make sure I was in my Parisian. The next night, my pops came into my room on Infirmary Road and showed me the first kilo I had seen. I didn't understand why he had it or why he was in his vet. He explained to me that it was left in a mobile home and that he was in his vet because if he got pulled over, he would be able to get away and throw it out the car. This is the actual picture the feds took on I-75 of our car wash after I stopped running it and my dad's partner, Otis Ayers, took over. I also became his driver, so during the summer or any break I had in school, I would either be driving him to an apartment we had on Collins in Miami or the apartment we had in Harlem in New York. While in Miami, I was introduced to Ruben Santana. That was Pop's Connect. One time out to dinner, my Pops went to the bathroom and Ruben was talking on the cell phone. He was holding the phone with his arm that his watch was on and asked me the time. I told him I didn't have a watch. He took the phone from his ear, looked at his all gold Rolex and went back to his conversation. After he hung up the phone, he looked at me and told me that I couldn't do business without knowing the time and took the Rolex off his wrist and handed it to me. That was the first Rolex I ever had which he replaced with a presidential Rolex when we got back to his apartment. Now while in Harlem, 
I was introduced to Richie Ritz. That's the light-skinned cat that's in the picture with my pops and stutter man. He used to take me to the flyest stores in Harlem and allow me to pick out whatever I wanted, from designer glasses to sweatsuits to ballets and feli shoes. He was the one that introduced me to Dapper Dan. Yep, that Dapper Dan, who made outfits for Eric B., Rakim, EPMD, Big Daddy Kane, and many more hip-hop artists. That's where I got the Gucci leather sweatsuit, MCM sweatsuit, and custom-made jackets. So within two years, I accomplished what I set out to do. Be like my cousin Wink, who I looked up to. Cuz had gotten locked up about a year and a half prior. I could have only imagined what we could accomplish if he hadn't gotten locked up. Now this is where Donna Johnson come into my life. At a concert at the Hair Arena, I was dipped from head to toe. Dapper Dan outfit, jewelry, and bankroll. She followed me around the concert the whole night, then approached me and asked me how many feet did I need her to give me, meaning how far did I want her to stand for me. I was hooked. She was built like a stallion. And did I mention twice my age? Guess where I stayed that night? Her place. Which became my hangout. She introduced me to other chicks trying to turn me out. But what she did was boost my confidence to where a chick my age didn't stand a chance. It lasted a few months. I think she thought I would start helping her out or giving her money. But my pops made sure a trick I would never be. After a concert, Lil Frank, Billy Halfman, and my cousin Montego were walking around downtown Cincinnati as everybody did after a concert. Keep in mind, we were all Jewed up, me sporting a Dapper Dan MCM outfit. As we walked past the Cincinnati Square, we saw young cats starting to tuck their chains in their shirts. Out of the crowd came Phoebe, a hairdresser from Dayton. She warned us that these cats were about to jump us. I'm guessing for our Jews. Billy said on the count of three, we were all going to run. But by the time he got to two, we had already took off. We had the whole Cincinnati Square chasing us. Lo and behold, not knowing where we were running, we ended up in front of the Clarenton Hotel where we were staying. Safe from the mob chasing us. You would think the drama was over. As we were checking in, the Dayton click on one side, the very rappers we came to see were checking in on the other side of the L-shaped counter. DJ Red Alert. Biz Marquis, Ice-T, and a few other rappers in their security. I'm pretty sure they were pissed because the hotel clerks were giving us all the attention and we had bought the rest of the rooms remaining. Words were exchanged back and forth between the two groups. Then all of a sudden, Billy Halfman yelled, Fuck y'all niggas, and threw something towards the rappers, and all hell broke loose. An all-out brawl ensued, only to be stopped by my cousin Yante pulling out a gun and their security pulling out their guns telling us you better tell them to put it up. Just a little taste of how we were doing it in the gym city. For those of you who ran with the rumor that I took 80000 from my pops, this guy, Aaron Cochran, was the one that took the 80000 out of my pops' apartment in the Meadows of Catapa. My pops had just bought and remodeled a house he had gotten from my Aunt Connie in Trotwood. So since he was not using the apartment as much, he allowed me to use it. This is where I used to take girls. This particular night, I was with Putin, Jaranda Sims, and I had Montego, Yante, and Aaron with me. I end up dropping them off at the apartment and Putin and I end up going to a hotel. The story goes, since I wasn't there, Yante and Monty told my pops Aaron stayed up all night walking around. They told him to take his ass to sleep, but he kept walking around. Little did I know that my old man had 80000 in his closet, which Aaron took and was gone by the time I came back to the apartment that morning. Since I didn't know the money was there, I didn't know that he had took it. I didn't find out till my pops called me. I was at home in the country and he asked me where his money was and don't go anywhere. When he pulled up, he was pissed and he told me he had money in the closet. 
In my head, I'm telling myself, that's why Aaron was gone that morning. I told him the story of what happened that night. He immediately held court. That's when he brought all people involved together. Yante, Monty, and Aaron was nowhere to be found. He had disappeared from the city. His mom, Mary, stayed in Texas, and that's where they said Aaron had went. His mom got in touch with my pops and told him if anything happened to her son that she would go to the cops. Eventually, we called up to him, and in front of our fish fry on 3rd Street at Norman's Towing, he told my pops that he took the money and that I had nothing to do with it. Not that I thought my pops didn't believe me, it was just good for him to hear from the guy who took it to say that I had nothing to do with it. This guy, Charles White, also had someone break into the apartment. So, of course, my pop sat me down and told me to be a better judge of character of the folks I had around me. Now 18, with my first house on Hawkwalk, it was time for us to go big. Laced with my own crew, Montego, Big Mark, Nine Figure Troy, Rick Burgum, D Money, and of course my cousin Yante around, plus a few other folks in the city I could dump work off to. I never thought to go to my pops at this time, so I set up a meeting with Jay Shepard. He was another hustler in the city getting it at the time. He looked up to my pops, and I also used to mess with his sister, Bobby Lynn Allen. We met up at Goldman's parking lot. He was in the dually that he had bought from my pops. He was with Sherman, a cat that he always kept around. So as I explained to Jay what I wanted, which was two keys, Sherman looked at Jay and said, Nah, man, his dad is going to fuck you up. I tried to explain to them that I was on my own and had my own house and my pops wouldn't find out. But Sherman kept telling Jay, man, his pops is going to fuck you up. Jay said he would do it, but they were on their way to an Eagles football game. And when he gets back, we'll get together. I thought it was on. A couple days later, while kicking it and waiting to get with Jay, at least three people stopped me and told me that my dad wanted me up at the shop. I ignored them. But when the fourth person told me, which is Tupac, a close friend of the family's, and was the rat's best friend, I knew I had to go. He rarely left me no option. Before I tell you what happened up at the shop, I must tell you the rat also testified against Tupac, his best friend. The rat got on the stand and told the jury that he wasn't promised anything, wasn't getting anything, and didn't have a deal with the government. When it was Tupac's attorney time to question him, he just handed the rat a letter and told him to read it aloud. It was the deal the rat had made with the government, explaining how he gets 5% of whatever he takes from whomever he testify against. The rat had just committed perjury. And Judge Rice didn't want to hear anything else the rat had to say. This fucking rat. Now headed to the shop. I didn't know that Sherman had told the rat what was about to take place between me and Jay. So the rat told my pops. So when I arrived at the shop, pops and Jay was in the office and court was again in session. My pops asked me was I supposed to be getting something from him. My pops back facing Jay, Jay tried to shake his head no, wanting me to say no. But me feeling grown and on my own, I told my pops yes. He looked at Jay and told him, you know what I do. And I will never put anything in your son's hand. Then dismissed him. Pops then asked me what was going on. I pleaded my case. And to my surprise, we walked outside. He called the rat over and told the rat to put five aside for me every month. Five bricks, that is. The rat tried to come up with everything possible for me not to get those five. Saying I'm not ready. I smoke weed. I hung around everybody. The rat was literally thinking of anything for me not to get them. Big guy told him one last time to make sure I have five put aside every month. The rat knew his time was coming to an end. And me, I knew it was fucking on. Hey. Dynasty under switch. Shown, full blown, crown. With the galaxy to bone, guard the zone, which is full of all pressure. 
Aggressive behavior, butter short, butter scotch, flavor. We in the paint, magnificent hand time, diamond light chain. With the first round draft, 15 to lead my team, all Americans, cocaine and heroin, marijuana for therapy, pipe carrying regularly, cash move heavily, criminal Frankie Beverly, silky smooth street melody composer, 88 and 8 series and Helen Dozer. My family's melon keys and foes is the best part of waking up. It's raking up money, they sing on tree. Broad life, stay fulfilling my need. I spread my ways and catch a breeze, free of turbulence, searching for perfectness. Gun smoking them snake worshippers. What's your purpose? False moves, you in the furnace. Trying to some currents and currency and never surface. Hit the block, return with purses. Frankie with Franklin, smoking with my acquaintances and 20 seat Lincolns, Aztec Lincolns, Giant Hercules braces, straighten your s like braces that leave you faces. It's all about this money and controlling the board. Walls on all floors, wax marble floors. We'll score triple doubles daily. Life is gravy and state. Move like fast breaks, throwing up weight like 45 pound plates. Playoffs. We out to get the ultimate payoffs. Mother loads. After Dynasty, the undiscovered shall be shown. Full blown Bentleys on chrome. Power League Empire with yeah. the galaxy to roam. Nigga guards the zone. Gets this maximum pressure. Full court, natural aggressive behavior. Butter soft, butter scotch flavor. I'm in the paint. Magnificent hang time. Diamond Yo, life shit. Been 10 years. Of blood, sweat, and tears, toast a mug of beer. Better yet, a mug of ever clear. Cause I'm going grain and still here. Bless the niggas, it ain't though. Light up a bank roll. Shot the stars out of space years ago. High of coke, that was before the resurrection. Now me in the poke, control the earth in the righteous direction. Dynasty connection, sanctified. Got my eagle eyes on the prize. Dark sky vampires get their hearts stabbed, born to die. Nowadays, it's more white, my mind is free of the pollutants. Move the smooth as lubricants in the city that's a nuisance. Niggas' morals is in ruins, parts throw wanderers. Shift the our monitors think about robbing us ain't nothing popping off her head just chopping off the hard boss all i got is soft and this land of law so leave the crusades like king arthur shove my blade through your body armor feed the remains to my oscars presidential officers talking some making princes out of paupers the king of Egypt's daughters, royalty spoiling me to die. Hard times never die. enter my mind. I'm too fly. Nigga, this a playoffs. We out to get the ultimate payoffs. Mother loads. After dynasty, the undiscovered shall be shown. Full blown Billy's on chrome. Power League Empire with the galaxy to roam. Nigga, guard the zone. Gets this maximum pressure. Full court, natural, aggressive behavior. Butter soft, butter scotch flavor. We in the paint. Magnificent hang time. Diamond life the same. But the decades still leave floating up. Wave. Mean coach, you know my way. Frank Saber, validate, commemorate. Hall of Famers to the hustles away. Smugglers and interstates, young Alexander the Great. Major League commissioners, spectators and listeners. Exhibitioners, whitewashing the rival visitors. Picture us, 50 grand photograph flashes. Baby blue P80 bachelors, living miraculous. Niggas stay mad at us. Watch a man of some we glamorous, get scandalous. I make sure that you slide off in an ambulance. Every since I can remember, been a winner. Fat from $100 dinners, giving cops the finger. Sliding hot drop, two seaters pumping LL, I'm bad. Reselling these six ounce bags, keeping my business glad. Sleep off the jet lag, spend a million European, knocking pieces out museums. Be like, you Jesus, did you see him? Really like helium, a straight orbit. Keep a sort of flavors of black orchids. Slippers for Russian Porsches, with heaters under every driver's seat. I slide my tinted windows up and get these to me. Just the playoffs, so hold off the ultimate payoff. Champagne spray off, got the dream team laid off. We skybox brown, white blocks of mink down. Ain't no way for these fights to go down. Watch me flash the rain, Sandalia box hanging out the drop. From this year to the infinite, this don't stop. Treasure box toasting, toasting the universe. Playoffs all, mega hall, trying to take it all, dynasty it never fall, cash for production.